Welcome to the Heritage Trust Network's 2020 conference. Hayes Parsons Insurance Brokers has been involved with the conference since 2016. And whilst it may look a little different this year, we hope you are still enjoying the conference and taking away some meaningful content. As a long-time corporate member, we are delighted to continue supporting Heritage Trust Network members in the following ways. We can provide insurance and risk management advice for all manner of heritage sites, listed buildings and building preservation trusts. We have recently launched our Roadmap to Resilience document. This is a simple to follow document that allows you to review the resilience of your own organisation and provide pointers in the areas that may need improvements. We would be happy to run through this with you and help guide you towards a more resilient organisation. We are also delighted to continue offering a rebate of one year's Heritage Trust Network membership costs for new Hayes Parsons clients. If you'd like to find out more about our rebate offer or discuss any of these points in more detail, please do get in touch. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Rita Harkin and I'm the Northern Ireland Support Officer for the Architectural Heritage Fund and I just wanted to give you a little bit of context to this project before I hand over to the main act, Anne Monaghan, uh, who is very much the driving force behind the project. This is one of four projects that the AHF has been working alongside to allow groups to avail of support from an innovative pilot called Village Catalyst. It's a result of a partnership between the Department of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs and the Department for Communities Historic Environment Division, which is the key funder behind the Heritage Transformed programme in Northern Ireland. And the pilot really set out to see whether empty historic buildings could uh, deliver on rural poverty and social isolation framework objectives. So could they tackle issues arising from rural poverty and social isolation? So Ederney is one of four projects, all of which um, have managed to get under the skin of the local community and its needs and deliver on a number of issues, including addressing childcare provision, uh, a training hotel for young adults with learning difficulties, uh, the Ederney case, which you'll hear about, a co-working space and wellbeing hub. And then lastly, a project which delivers on affordable housing. So all of these projects happily remain highly relevant today, uh, all based on getting uh, a handle on what the community itself really needed. And of course, um, as we can see with people migrating to back to villages and ceasing the commute, the co-working space uh, the wellbeing hub in Ederney is more relevant than ever and in fact the group is seeking to expand this activity into other historic buildings uh, in the village and it is having a truly catalytic effect. So these are very positive beacons of hope and uh, I think demonstrate a way forward for not just villages but for towns and cities too and I'm very pleased to hand over to Anne to explain more about the project. Hello everybody, my name's Anne Monaghan and I'm the project manager on the redevelopment of Murphy's Cafe, Pat Murphy's in Ederney, County Fermanagh. And I want to just take you through this morning the uh, vision we have for Pat's. Now I'm sitting here at home surrounded by iconic images of Northern Ireland. So we have here up in the background, Titanic and Olympic. And just up in here, we have a, a picture, lovely art piece of the first Northern Ireland Assembly. So iconic moments in Northern Ireland's history. And I'm going to talk to you about a third iconic project now, and that is the redevelopment of Pat Murphy's, Murphy's Cafe, but also Main Street in Ederney. And the redevelopment of uh, Pat's has stimulated the redevelopment of Main Street in this small rural border village in County Fermanagh. Now, three, four years ago, we sat down as Ederney Trust and said to ourselves, 
what are we going to do to restore Main Street, which was facing dereliction. A dereliction really, really common to loads of Main Streets across Northern Ireland and Ireland. And we identified Pat Murphy's, not just because it's a listed building and uh, a building that was used, for example, on fair days and was a former tea rooms, but also um, it's owned by Enemy Credit Union. And we thought to ourselves we could form a really unique partnership here and develop this together. And then then we started to look around for funding. And as some things are meant to be, we have been talking to Rita uh, Harkin for some time about uh, various buildings and various projects and various ideas. And then Rita was appointed to the AHF and there was some funding starting to become available. And there was the, the DRS scheme, uh, pilot scheme was coming on, um, funding through DFC if we wanted to apply for it. And it was like... Not a not a perfect storm, but uh, although on occasion it has been stormy, we have had setbacks, we have had COVID nineteen, we have had other issues facing the project, but we're at the side of those now, and we're starting to starting to bring the the project back to its former glory, the building. Okay, so from from this the two up two down building, you have a we have a lovely shed um out the back. And we're going to restore it to its tea rooms, to health and well-being space and to a co-working space. And what better environment or climate could you ask for to do all that than a post-COVID climate? Now, without the, the opportunity of having the building there, having the partnership there and having the funding coming on stream, we could not have brought the project even to the stage it's at now. We're building work has commenced. And... Apart from that, like I say, it's it's what it's done for Main Street. They even just announcing that, you know, this work was starting to happen. Two buildings across the street have been redeveloped into townhouses with three more planned for New Street, just adjoining Main Street. Uh, another building um, has been reopened into hairdressers' headlines. Uh, and, and just down the street, a new Airbnb has opened number 25, which is luxury accommodation in this beautiful Fermanagh, beautiful part of Fermanagh. And, and the post office as well, just right next door, has been has been redeveloped and there's beauticians going in there. And then down the Castle Derg Road, we have a new development coming, uh, coming on stream and two houses sold on it already. Big, huge, beautiful four bedroom detached houses um, because of the demand for living now in the countryside, um, in villages where you have everything on your doorstep. So to, to finish off, just to say that this is an iconic project and development and building for Enerney, but also for Fermanagh and also for Northern Ireland, because it shows if you have the mix of the right project, the right partnership, the right people, you can turn derelict streets and parts of town around into something that is attractive, stimulates further redevelopment and investment, but most of all, makes people want to live there. I'm Anne Monaghan, a trustee with Edirne Community Development Trust and project manager on this development. This was one of the first projects we identified as maybe a project we could take forward in association with Edirne Credit Union. Full name is Q. Jared Carlton. I'm the chairperson of Edirne Credit Union. Our intention was to, to convert it into a new office premises for the credit union which we thought it was, it was in more in the centre of the village and to be a better premises, a better location. We bought the building about 12 years ago and just after we bought the premises, it was made a listed building. We couldn't make it into an office then because 
it just wasn't suitable. In 2016, the Development Trust was rejuvenated with new members to try and address issues of rural poverty, population decline and dereliction, uh, especially in relation to some of our community assets, including our historic buildings. We've suffered over the last number of years from dereliction on Main Street, which is typical of many Main Streets um, in villages right across Northern Ireland and Ireland. The community overwhelmingly said, we don't have a, a space where groups can meet together, we don't have a social enterprise really. So we thought then, um, yeah, that's a great idea coming from the community to turn this into a, really a multi-use building, a mini community hub if you like, with tea rooms, co-working space and a health and wellbeing space. Construction started in March there and it's moving on, as you can see, it's moving on fairly, fairly rapidly. Covid has slowed up things for a bit at the minute. Materials are hard to get, but it, it is moving on. My name is Raymond Hunter and I work for Sasson Hunter Building Contracts. The intentional plan would be is to turn this area into a, co into a coffee room. Upstairs will be, there's two conference rooms and a well-being room and then behind us the outbuildings will be renovated and extended to make um, another two conference rooms and a, a small gym room. Through the, the support of Edinburgh Community Development Trust we're, we're encouraging developers to come into the area and build houses because population is critical for small communities. But you, you too take pride in your town and you like to see it moving on. We're going to make Adderney really the place to stop off, the place to stay, the place to visit in Fermanagh.